All right, so good evening to all of you. Now, let me start this very important session on this COVID-19. So this is one of the uh, reason why we are completely locked down in our homes, right? Not attending the colleges, not attending the hospitals properly, right? Partially we are attending, but not completely. And uh, now, now, so many of you might have read related to this COVID-19 and a uh, lot of theory classes you might have attended, a lot of multiple choice questions related to the theory aspect of COVID-19 might have been attended by yourself. So in this particular session, I want to do a little uh, unique thing that is image based session on this particular COVID-19. So in this particular session, I will be just discussing only images related to your COVID-19. So related to its structure, related to its manifestation, related to its uh, the immunology and related to its treatment. So everything based on an image, we will discuss about this COVID-19, right? So I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Guba, a general medicine educator on this Unacademy platform, right? Now, so let me start the first important image, right? So everyone might have come across this particular image of this COVID-19. But all of you should know what are the structures of this particular COVID-19. So can anyone tell me what does this A represent, B represent, what is C, D, E and as well as F? Anyone of you? What is your A, B, C, D, E, F? I'm just waiting for some of the answers. Right. So, the structure of the COVID-19 can be asked as a image-based question in your post-graduation entrance exams. Either you take the central exams or you take the NEET PG entrance exam. Right. So what is your A? Now, you take this A. A is your... But uh, uh, Avinash, you should be little clear. Uh, rather than calling it as glycoprotein, there is a name given to that. Right. So let me tell you what exactly this A represent. A represent it is your spike glycoprotein. The word spike is very, very important for me. Why? I will tell you. So this is your spike glycoprotein. Right. Then you take this word B. Okay. So this is your A now. So the pink color one is your spike glycoprotein. Now you take this B. So B is what? It is your green color one. So the B, it is your M protein which is present in the wall of the COVID-19. And you take this C, this blue color one, right? C represent the heme agglutinin esterase, right? Heme agglutinin esterase, right? Then you take this D, the red one, right? So I think everyone can answer this D, the red one. Right? So this red one is nothing but your envelope. Right? Envelope of the COVID-19. That is your D. Now, you take this E. I hope everyone will answer about this E. So what is your E? Right. So this particular E, it is your single stranded RNA nuclear material, right? Very good. So RNA and as well as N protein, right? RNA and as well as N protein, okay? Now you take this F, right? Which is your yellow color one. So what does this F stands for? Yellow color structure, which is present in this COVID-19. Very good. Excellent, Parthik. So F, it is your E protein. Right? F is your E protein. Okay. Now, so I will just shortly revise all the structures related to your COVID-19 cellular structure. Right? So now, you take this. Just a second. Yeah. 
so the pink color one is your spike protein spike protein is the one which is very very important structure for me i will discuss in detail about the spike protein now the u shaped structure which has two heads right which has two heads is nothing but your m protein whereas you take e protein e protein has only one head whereas u it has two heads that is your m protein whereas you take the heme agglutinin esterase dimer it is having a disc disc shaped structure within the cell wall right outer side it is a disc shaped then followed by that you have envelope then single stranded rna and as well as n protein okay so this is about the structure of your the covid 19 virus so each and every structure is very very important wherein they can ask you as an image based question for you right now now we will move on to the discussion of this particular spike see this spike is very very important for me the spike which is there for the covid 19 is the one which is very important for me why i will tell you okay now what is this particular spike protein this one second right so what is this particular spike protein okay see remember it is your spike protein which adheres right which adheres to the cell of the human right so what is the structure of your covid 19 which will bind to the cell of your human being that is your spike protein so that is the importance of your spike protein now i will show you another important image right see your image of this corona virus it looks little similarity with your hiv virus right so you should be little careful in your exams whereas for your hiv one you have gp120 club shaped protein and gp41 which is present within the cell wall of your hiv so gp120 gp41 they are the proteins for your hiv1 which helps in binding to your cd4 cell in the humans right now now this particular spike protein is the one which will so with the help of the spike protein which is present in covid 19 that will bind to the receptors now i will tell you, i am showing you two images in this particular sorry two viruses in this particular image one is your covid 19 this is your covid 19 and this is your mers corona virus b sorry mers corona virus so can anyone tell me what is this mers corona virus yes can anyone answer what is this mers corona virus i'm just waiting for the answer yes anyone very good avinash excellent so that is your middle eastern respiratory syndrome where is it where this was found this was found in 2012 in saudi arabia right this was initially detected in 2012 in saudi arabia all right now now my question is right now my question is what is your a receptor for covid 19 what is your b receptor for mers corona virus can anyone answer this what is your a receptor a for covid 19 what is your receptor b for mers corona virus anyone yes definitely i do understand everyone will answer the receptor for covid 19 but this particular image is specifically kept for knowing what is your b yes avinash good so your a is your as2 that is angiotensin converting enzyme 2 right fine good but what is your b can anyone answer what is this b right so let me tell you so mers corona virus 
it will bind to the receptor to the, in the human cell that name of the receptor is your p p p4 receptor right the name of the receptor is dpp4 receptor so remember this point here for covid 19 virus the receptor is a2 which is present on the human cell whereas you take mers corona virus the receptor which is present on the human cell is your dpp4 receptor right so these two receptors can be asked as an image based question for you in your pg entrance exams right now now followed by that we will take up another image based question related to your covid 19 now so before going into that let me discuss few points about your ace2 so can anyone tell me what is the location of your ace2 on which organs this particular ace2 is present anyone they are present on the outer surface of the cells right very good uh, lungs you have answered apart from lungs outer surface of the cells present in the lungs present in the arteries not only lungs arteries heart kidney and intestine right and intestine so this is the place where the location of your ace2 is present right then now let me tell you what exactly is the function of your ace2 the function of your ace2 in the normal human beings is that to reduce the blood pressure right the normal function of your ace2 is to reduce the blood pressure how it will reduce the blood pressure by right by catalyzing the cleavage of angiotensin 2 so angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor it will increase the blood pressure of the individual so what does this your ace2 does ace2 will cause the cleavage of your angiotensin 2 and thereby it will reduce the blood pressure in a normal individual now what is the other function of your ace2 the other function of the ace2 is that it also serves as the entry point right it also serves as the entry point into the cells okay so that is the function entry point of the viruses into the cell which virus that is your covid 19 virus okay right so this is the function of your ace2 now let me discuss few more points about the entry now you take this particular structure or the image so your spike protein is the one which will bind to your ace2 and then it will enter but before that on the cell we have a structure called tmprss2 on the human cell on the human cell membrane we have a structure called tmprss2 what it will do it will cause the activation of your spike protein once the spike protein is activated this spike protein will come and bind with the ace2 which is present on the human cell and remember it is through your ace2 the virus will enter into the cell it is through your ace2 the virus will enter into the cell all right now so this is about the story of your how the virus will enter into the cell that is enough right this also you might have learned in your microbiology but let me just show you a image which is very much required for the practical purpose right which is very much required for the practical purpose right now you see this question what is the protocol for the sequence for the sequence of donning yes avinash we can say that it is a co receptor because it is helping the binding of that particular spike protein to the receptor 
Yeah. What is the protocol for the sequence of donning? See, what do you mean by the word donning? Right? So, everyone of us, like nowadays you might be seeing in the Facebook and various social media, many of the doctors, they are wearing this particular personal protective equipment, right? And they are keeping their images on different social media platforms, right? But, see, once a personal protective equipment is given to you, there is a sequence how you have to wear this particular personal protective equipment. So the sequence in which we have to wear the personal protective equipment that is called as donning. So now can anyone tell me what is the sequence that should be followed? I have given the numbers. I have given the numbers randomly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Yeah. So anyone? Can, any, can anyone arrange this in a sequence? So this can be asked as a sequence based question in your exams. Right. So without wasting much time, I'll just tell you the sequence. Right. So first of all, first put the special work clothes and work shoes. That is a basic thing. Once we enter into the hospital, we need to leave our dress and then we have to wear the special work clothes and as well as the work shoes. That is the first thing. Then followed by that, what is the sequence of wearing this personal protective equipment? Right? Let me show you the sequence. So the sequence is the sequence is one, four. What is this? This one is the four. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to wash our hands first, then followed by that, it is six. See, before wearing the glove, you need to keep your disposable surgical cap. Then you take seven is the next sequence. What is that you need to do? You need to keep your N95 surgical mask after keeping your surgical cap. Then you take two. After keeping your N95, just wear your inner disposable gloves, right? Inner disposable gloves. Then followed by that, then three. Then what you need to do after wearing this inner disposable glove? You need to wear, you need to put on the goggles and then you put your protective clothing, that white colored one or the blue colored one, whatever it is. Then finally, you have five. What is this five? Put on the disposable latex gloves once again. So you need to wear two gloves. One is your inner glove and the other one is outer glove. So two gloves you need to wear for your donning. So this completes the entire sequence of your donning. Right? So the fifth one. Now, so what I will do is I put all these in a sequence and I will show you. Right, you see this. This is the sequence of donning. First of all, put on the special work clothes and work shoes. Then wash your hands. Then put on your disposable surgical cap. Then wear your N95 mask. Then wear your inner disposable glove. Then put on goggles and protective clothing. Then put on disposable latex glove. That completes your donning. That completes your donning. So, this sequence has to be maintained whenever we are wearing this particular personal protective equipment. Now, see, not only, see, the importance is that not just wearing, even the removal is also very, very important. Right? How you will remove that particular personal protective equipment is also very important. I will just tell you. But first of all, let me tell you that at every step of your removal, you have to wash your hands with the sterilizer, right? Or with your sterilium. Now, what is the first thing that you need to do? See, I said you that we need to wear two pairs of glove. So, first you remove the outer glove, right? First you need to remove the outer glove. Once you have removed the outer glove, wash your hands with the sterilizer. Then followed by that, you remove your white or blue color clothing, that is protective clothing. Again, wash your hands with the sterilizer. Now, the next event is remove the goggles. Remove the goggles. 
Wash your hand again with the sterilizer. Remove the mask. Again wash your hands with the sterilizer. Remove the cap. Again wash your hands with the sterilizer. And finally, you need to remove that inner glove, whatever, whatever was there. See, what is the importance of washing the clothes at every step? The importance of washing the clothes at every step is that you are trying to remove the virus which is present on each and every equipment what you are removing. That is the importance of washing the washing your hands with the sterilizer at every step. So finally, the removal is completed. Right? Finally, the removal is completed. Right? Yeah. After removing your inner glove, then remove your hospital clothing. Right? Remove your hospital clothing, then wear your dress, then go to your room. Okay? So, this is the sequence of your removal also. So, remember, it is not only wearing which is very important, even the removal of your personal protective equipment is also very, very important. Yeah, see, even before, yes, even before removing the outer glove, you need to wash your hands. Because you don't know like where all you have touched and come and then you started removing your gloves. Yeah, this is step one. The step one is remove your gloves. All right, then now. So after that, we will just do a question on this particular results of COVID-19. Right? That is your antigen antibody test. Basically, antibody test. Now, tell me what does this A represent? What does this B represent? What does this C represent? And what does this D represent? Any one of you? So, A, what is this? Your IgG is negative, IgM is also negative. So, if the individual is asymptomatic, right, so he is considered as a normal individual, right, he is considered as a normal individual. Then you take the word, you take B, only IgG is positive. So, if only IgG is positive, what does this represent? This represent the previous infection, right, this represent the previous infection, all right, and yeah, that is your chronic infection. And he has developed long-term immunity. Then, you take your C. What does your C represent? C, your IgM is positive. So, what does this represent? This represent the recent infection. Right? C represent acute or recent infection. Whereas, if you take both of them are positive, IgG is positive and IgM is also positive. So, what does this represent? This again represent the acute on chronic infection. Right? Recent infection with COVID-19. Right? Recent infection with COVID-19. Right? So, you can call it as reinfection, but even in the first infection also, there can be overlap. Right? Don't tell it is a reinfection. Even in the first infection also, there can be an overlap. I will show you that. Right? I will show you where it will be an overlap. Okay? But all these test results, you should be very clear with. So, if only IgG is positive, right? I'll show you this. If only IgG is positive, that is your previous infection with COVID-19. Both only IgM is positive. It is recent infection. And both are negative. There is no infection. If both are positive, it can be recent infection with COVID-19 or it can be reinfection. Right? So, don't, if both are positive, don't jump onto a conclusion that it, he is having a reinfection. No. I will show you where both of them can overlap. Now, you see this. Yeah. Now, this is another image-based question related to your COVID-19. So, now this is your 0, right? This is your 7, this is your 14, this is your 21, this is your 28. So, what does day 0, day 7, day 14, 21, 28 of COVID-19 represents? What does this represent? 
so can anyone tell me at the point seventh day of your infection okay what day zero what does it represent anyone day zero what does it represent day zero it represents that the individual had infection so if you do pcr right if you do pcr even though the individual is asymptomatic the pcr can be positive from day zero right the individual can be having a pcr being positive now what will appear on day seven any one of you what will appear on day seven on day seven you will have the appearance of any one of you very good so on day seven the igm becomes positive of your covid 19 then exactly you double that that means at the second week so what is it? at day 14 what will appear at day 14 what will appear at day 14 you can have the igg positive right igg positive now you see here see on day 14 both of them can be positive right on day 14 both of them can be positive igg can be positive igm also can be positive so if both are positive don't come to a conclusion that it's a reinfection nine nah. it might be the first infection itself but the individual might be in a stage between seven to okay what does your day 21 represent that is by third week Day 21, what does this represent? Hmm? By your day 21, your IgM becomes negative. Right? By your day 21, the IgM, it becomes negative. Okay? Then, at your day 28, right? At day 28, there will be complete resolution even your pcr also becomes negative right even your pcr also becomes negative only igg will be there right so from this so the red color line this is your igg so this igg it represents that the individual is having long term immunity with your covid 19 so see you need not mug it up at all right don't mug up just add the number of weeks zero right that is a point of infection your pcr can be positive then add one week seven igm becomes positive two that is 14 igg becomes positive then 21 that is the third week igm becomes negative then fourth week 28 the pcr becomes negative but when the point when the pcr becomes negative or igm becomes negative only igg will be positive so this indicates that the individual is having long-term immunity or lifelong immunity. Yes, this will be lifelong, right? That is the reason why the plasma of these particular patients are being used for the treatment of your COVID-19, right? Why? Because of these antibodies, IgG antibodies only, right? So see, don't be in a hurry once the individual is positive for testing for negative. For example, you take our singer Kanika Kapoor, right? She was tested almost five times or six times for COVID-19. Why? Because she, uh, I don't know. She might be in a hurry to go back to her home. Right? So that is why she was being tested repeatedly. So almost like fifth test or sixth test was uh, negative for her. Okay? So it will take its own sequence. Right? It will take its own sequence for the antibodies and as well as the PCR to become negative. Right? Now, now followed by that, we will move on to the treatment. Right? See, IgG, it remains in the blood and provides long-term immunity, right? It provides long-term immunity, okay? So when it will become negative, still we don't have any studies because it's a very recent infection, right? In December uh, 2019, this has brought up to the uh, community and as well as to the world. So how long this IgG will remain, the studies have to tell us, right? Then now 
Now, you see the treatment part, right? See the treatment part. So, once the treatment is done, then I will take up your questions. Just wait for two minutes or three minutes. The session will be over. What are the drugs A, B, C, D, E acting on COVID-19 life cycle? See, this is your A. This is your B. This is your C. This is your D. And this is your E. So, yes. Who will tell me what is A, B, C, D, E? And what is this entire thing? It's a life cycle of your COVID-19. So, what is that first thing? It is a fusion. Then endocytosis. Then translation. Proteolysis. Translation and RNA replication. Then packaging. Then virion release. So, the antibiotics, whatever we are giving, they act at different levels of the life cycle of the individual. So, can anyone tell me what is the antibiotic or what is the drug which will act at the level of A? Anyone? Right. So, let me tell you that. Now, see, these are all the experimental strategies which are going on. Right? Let me tell you. So, at the point of A, the antibodies, whatever we are taking from the cured patient, they are the one which will act at the level of your fusion. So, they will inhibit these antibodies, your IgG antibodies, they will inhibit the fusion of your spike protein of coronavirus with the ACE2 receptor. Then, then we have the co-receptor, your activation receptor. What is that? TMPR SS2. The drug which can act on TMPR SS2 is camostate misylate. Right, it is your camo state misylate. Then our wonder drug that is hydroxychloroquine, HCQ, right, where the entire world is waiting for the India to get it exported. Okay, so you take your three, sorry, C. At the point of C, your hydroxychloroquine will act. So what it will do? It will inhibit the endocytosis of your COVID-19 virus. Right, it will inhibit the endocytosis of your COVID-19 virus. Then, then followed by that, you take the next step that is proteolysis. So, the antiviral drugs which will inhibit the proteolysis of your COVID-19 is lopinavir and as well as ritonavir. And finally, we have what is called RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, which is required for the cell cycle of your COVID-19. And that is the point where your remdesivir will act. Right, your remdesivir will act. Okay, so this particular sequence is very, very important. Until, unless you understand the life cycle, you will not be able to understand the mechanism of action of these particular drugs. Right, so I'll just repeat this again. So, at your point A, that is your monoclonal antibodies. Right, that is your at point B, it is your camostate missile. And endocytosis, it is inhibited by your hydroxychloroquine. Then proteolysis, it is inhibited by your lopinavir and as well as ritonavir. And finally, at the point of E, which will inhibit your RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, that is your remdesivir. Okay. So, this completes the discussion of your image-based questions related to your COVID-19. Right. So, I have, I have taken you all the way from the structure of your COVID-19 and finally I have discussed up to the treatment aspect and the complications what the individual will die, what is the cause of death, the cause of death is finally your ARDS. Right. So, the cause of death, yeah. So, the cause of death in these individuals will be the ARDS and this ARDS will cause multi-organ dysfunction. Right. And finally, death of the individual. Okay, so and because of this, you can explain everything, right? You can explain everything with your ARDS. All the structures can get affected. Why? Because of your hypoxia. Okay, so this completes the session on the image based questions on the COVID 19. So, yes, overall, how was the session? Right. So, yeah, see, signs and symptoms, everyone are knowing nowadays. I did not explain that. So, most common symptom will be fever, cough, dyspnea, dry cough, right, and uh, myalgia, fatigue, 
So these are all the signs and symptoms. Uh, signs what may be there? One, the individual develops ARDS, they'll have bilateral crepitations. Right? Yeah. So what I advise is please just inform to your friends also. Right? So this is completely a wonderful session of the image based questions on your COVID-19. So please ask them to watch this because this is a one, this is a particular session where you don't require a lot of theory to remember. Right? You remember the image and then you can answer your question in your exam. Right? So thank you very much and see you in the upcoming sessions. Yeah, there can be also only sore throat, right? So, multiple ways the symptomatology of your COVID-19 can be. Right? So, thank you very much for attending the session. Please just inform to your friends also about this particular session. They, they can watch this as a recorded format.